clinical notes. Ptosis is often unilateral, but can be bilateral. If bilateral it is often asymmetrical. Muscle fatigability can be demonstrated with ptosis, as sustained up gaze, increases eyelid weakness, whereas, resting the eyelid by closure for a short period, improves the weakness, after looking down for a short period, thus resting the eyelid muscles, the upper lid may overshoot, and for an instant, appear slightly retracted when the patient performs a saccade, back to the primary position. Because the eyelid weakness improves, this is the Kogan lip twitch sign. Patients furrow the forehead, utilizing the frontalis muscle to compensate for the ptosis. This will be unilateral if the ptosis is unilateral. Typically, the weakness of the extraocular muscles is asymmetrical, affects more than one extraocular muscle, and is not limited to muscles innervated by a single cranial nerve. Weakness of both medial and lateral rectus muscles can result in a pseudo-internuclear ophthalmoplegia, weakness of adduction of one eye, with weakness of abduction in another eye. An important feature in myasthenia gravis is that with sustained lateral gaze, the medial rectus of the adducting eye fatigues, and thus the nystagmus becomes coarser, in the abducting eye. Remember, in true internuclear ophthalmoplegia, adduction becomes normal, when the abducting eye is covered, and this will not be the case in myasthenia gravis. Fluttering of the totic eyelid may be seen, during eye movements, lid hopping, saccadic slowing may be seen, due to fatigability following repeated eye movements, and the saccades may have increased duration. This is termed intrasaccadic fatigue. Bilateral weakness of the facial muscles is almost always present. This results in an expressionless face. It is important to demonstrate facial weakness by testing the facial muscle groups. Ask the patient to close the eyes. The eyelashes will not be barred. Demonstrate weakness of eye closure by asking the patient to close the eye tight. This can be easily overcome using your finger and thumb. The peak sign has been described in myasthenia gravis. The eyes drift open to reveal the sclera during attempted eye closure. Ask the patient to seal the lips and inflate and keep the cheeks out. This may be easily overcome and air readily escapes through the lips when the cheeks are squeezed. In severe facial weakness, the lips cannot be easily opposed. A myasthenic snarl may be observed when the patient is asked to smile. This results because whilst there is contraction of the middle portion of the upper lip, the upper mouth corners fail to contract. Demonstrate weakness of mouth opening by asking the patient to keep the mouth open. This can be easily overcome by applying gentle, upward pressure on the chin. Jaw opening muscle often display normal strength, and jaw closure muscles are more frequently affected. This can be tested by exerting a sustained downward pressure on the chin, while asking the patient to keep the jaw closed. Weakness of neck muscles is common. The neck flexors are more severely affected than the extensors. The jaw supporting sign, if present is pathognomic of myasthenia gravis. This may not be present at the beginning of the examination, but may become more evident later, through the examination with fatigability. Weakness of the palatal muscles, results in a weak and nasal quality speech. This may not be evident in the beginning. Ask the patient to count out loud, with progressive fatigability, the speech will become less distinct, and more nasal. Examination of the limbs will demonstrate proximal muscle weakness without wasting upper limb muscles 
are more likely to be affected than the lower limb muscles. Demonstrate fatigability at the deltoid muscle by first testing shoulder abduction and then asking the patient to repeatedly abduct and adduct the shoulder, usually 10 to 15 times. Then, retest shoulder abduction, and in patients with fatigable weakness, there will be marked increase in deltoid weakness. Alternatively, fatigability can be demonstrated in similar fashion for elbow extension. Avoid demonstrating fatigability for elbow flexion for two reasons. In myasthenia gravis, the triceps are more likely to be affected than biceps, and triceps are weaker than biceps, thus weakness is easier to demonstrate in the examination setting. Sensory testing is normal in myasthenia gravis. It is important to be aware of other associated autoimmune diseases that may result in a neuropathy. Tell the examiner that you would like to look for evidence of immunosuppressive therapy that is steroids, steroid purpura, Cushingoid appearance. Look for a thymectomy scar. Look for features of other associated autoimmune diseases, hyperthyroidism, tachycardia, tremor, goiter, features of Graves' disease, most common association. Take a detailed drug history, considering possibility of drug-induced myasthenic syndrome.